Okay, it looks like we're live. So uh, welcome to another Social Time TV. With uh, My name is Greg Valeria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, and you are? I'm Sean Charles, also known as Social Media Sean. And uh, he has the Social Time TV logo on top of him right now, so you can't see him there, but he is a handsome devil. <laughs> I think Just I'm kidding. popping up in the bottom, actually. No, yeah, you're there. at the way at the bottom. Way uh, at the bottom. There we go. Way at the bottom. There you are. Anyway, let's uh, let's get started here with a half an hour of Social Time TV. What do you want to start off with, Sean? Well, you know, there's been a lot of stuff in the news the last week, you know, uh, with technology and social media and so forth. Um, but something that caught my attention was, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about artificial intelligence in the workplace and robots and um, about um, raising the minimum wage and the repercussions with that, uh, you know, in mm. the fast food and, and lower wage sector and how merchants are going to deal with that. And it looks like um, McDonald's has wasted no time at all. Um, and they have started to um, roll out um, self-serve kiosks where you can just order yourself. And it looks like there's some other uh, promotions on top of that. But one of the main things being is that all of a sudden that cuts you know, someone's job pretty much uh, right off the bat. Um, but it's interesting, user experience and if it's better or not. And um, just thought that'd be something neat for us to talk about. What are your uh, initial thoughts on that, Greg? Well, um, I think... A few years back, I talked with um, uh, Founder Spaces, uh, yeah, Steve, and um, when I interviewed him on Nerd Stalker, he said that you know these these elimination of jobs by robots are coming, so you you better just be ready for it. Um, you know, meaning that you have to pivot your skills. You'd have to look for areas where you know, humans are still going to be valuable, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, um, you know, not saying that, you know, this is going to be a totally automated world, but, um, you know, think about it. Um, there's a lot of things out there that can be automated and then why shouldn't it be right? Have you tried so, one of these puppies? Um, no, I, I actually, we'll see. Let me take that back. Um, not at a McDonald's, but I did do a kiosk type of uh, ordering at a restaurant. Um, I forget which one it was, but uh, I thought it was interesting. Um, you know, Japan has uh, things like that are somewhat automated. Um, so, for example, when you go to a sushi restaurant in Japan, there's a, they call it the sushi conveyor systems. And all you have to do is find a table. There's a hostess still still there, but they just seat you at the table, and then you basically order by by menu, uh, and it pops out and it gets delivered by conveyor belt the sushi to you. Huh. So and what's that so like? you don't even know what's involved. No, oh, your personal. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, um, you know, uh, you know, it takes away from some of the ambiance if you like having your food prepared in front of you like sushi, um, but. If you're just there to eat, um, and I think they 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 pass the savings on to you, to you. So um, in those sushi conveyor systems, it's actually cheaper. Um, at least in Japan, I, I think uh, they're a novelty here in the U.S. still, and um, probably in Canada that there you pay a premium for it. But in Japan, you don't have to do much. But I, you know, I I, I didn't see any problem with it. Um, you know, I didn't really think about the repercussions of um, a server losing their job. Um, but, you know, there's going to, like, uh, like, you know, um, Steve said uh, from uh, Founder Space, I, I mean, you know, it's coming. The automation is coming, so you better be ready for it. Right. So does, you know, I mean, is this just inevitable then? I mean, <clears throat> does it concern you at all that, you know, that these are taking away human jobs and not necessarily really replacing them or are, are they being replaced somehow or not so much? Well, you know, I, I hear two sides of the coin, right? I hear one where it's just eliminating jobs, but um, there's probably other jobs that are created by that, right? right. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it would be skilled jobs. So what you're lo losing is unskilled jobs. Now, <laughs> Is that going to create a disparity in, um, you know, a, a divide between people? You know, people who have skills versus non-skills. The gap's going to be wider now. Um, you know, and does the unemployment 
increase because of that. I, you know, I, there's all these things that go through my mind. I, right. you know, it's a social problem that, uh, I don't think I'm ready to discuss here on social time TV since we deal with social networks, not social problems. Right. <laughs> but I, I mean, it, it's a bit I, I concerned. Um, sure. I'm concerned. I feel bad for the people who are, will lose their jobs. Um, uh, how, how they figure out how to redistribute themselves um, is going to be interesting because uh I think I was talking to someone just the other day about, um, uh, you know, diversity and, you know, can, can, how to increase diversity in the workplace. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the service jobs are lower paying than some of the, you know, professional jobs. And so that's going to be a, I think it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be a problem. I mean, I just keep coming back to the minimum wage issue where, you know, at $15 an hour, whatever it happens to be, you know, in still many cities, uh, that's not even a living wage. Here in uh, beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, uh, the living wage is like $19.28 uh, mm -hmm. uh, to sure. basically be able to um, uh, have, a, you know, um, uh, you know, housing and pay your bills and so on and so forth and save for retirement. Um, but it doesn't look like you know, that necessarily solves a problem, the bigger wage increase, it just creates another. So, you know, I'm excited about the technology uh, aspect of it. I think that um, for myself, I would be interested in trying to use it. Um, you know, not that it's, I have a problem interacting or don't like it. I just think that, you know, if it makes my, you know, my experience more streamlined, or I can just use it right from my app, and I don't even need a touch screen, I'm just on my smartphone, then, you know, in that respect, I think it's, it's a great thing. Um, there was another story that McDonald's has just ordered a whole bunch of tablets. And apparently it's just for games and to use while you're there. But, you know, it sounds like that it's probably part of a bigger picture. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that one. Well, McDonald's has to do something, right? I mean, it's no secret that um, they've been really nailed uh, about the unhealthy menu that they have over the years. Um, you know, here in San Francisco, I think a, a group sued them uh, for <laughs> supplying, um, you know, Happy Meal toys. I it was just kind of a crazy thing, but but I think that um, that's part of the part of the issue with McDonald's is that they have to pivot somewhere, um, and and like it or not, a healthier menu is selling more to us uh, these days than you know the regular menus are. So right, sure, they have. To, I mean, from a business standpoint, they got to do something. You know, yeah, agreed. Right. Okay. We kick, kick that one to death, Sean. I think we did it. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. All right. So what's this about the Facebook developing standalone camera and live video? Well, it's funny you said that because I actually saw my friend um, use that the other day. It was kind of interesting actually on, on YouTube, on, on Facebook, I mean. so. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, tell me a little bit more. So this article here, and uh, I mean, the, what they call Facebook Live, which is kind of yeah. like Periscope or Blab in a respect that it's live video. Um, what, what, uh, what, is, what, what are you thinking on that one? You know, that was interesting. I, he, he posted, you know, he's a friend of mine on Facebook. So he posted, I'll be spinning um, uh, discs from seven to eight tonight. You know, I mean, just this is a simple thing, you know, now. You know, how many more people saw him versus other apps? I, I don't know. But, um, you know, it was interesting for him to post that. I, I viewed it for a little while. You know, it, it's it's so seamless on Facebook to view video. You just have to scroll over it and then you're watching it already. Right. right. Um, so I, I thought it was interesting. I've, uh, you know, it, it, it's no better or different than other uh, live apps that I've used before. Um so I, I mean, it was just kind of neat. It was on the timeline in Facebook. That's all, you know. One um, of the things, one of the things this article brings up is that you know people are uh, concerned. You know, Facebook broke out Messenger, and they used to actually have a separate camera app as well. Is that they want to, um, you know, put this into a separate, um, a separate app for this type of you know streaming and live video and stuff. But I mean, I guess wouldn't there be some benefits to that, Greg? That you know. I mean, is the app, is the size of the app, you know, matter in the sense that, you know, having a designated app might be more effective? Or, you know, people seem to well, think that well, they don't like switching I mean, apps and it's a pain. And Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, um, 
Well, we're in the app area anyway. I mean, our our phones are set up that way, right? Through apps, right? right? So uh, Google has done that for years now, right? You, you know, if you go on to their, they, if you're on I, iOS, they have a separate app for Docs, separate app for Drive, separate app. Now, you know, um, you know, I think the mobile experience is quite different than the desktop experience. You know, the desktop, I really don't want it separated like that on my mobile right. phone. I think I would like it separated just because that's the way the phone user experience works. Right. right. So, so I think that's kind of the way I, I'm looking at it. Um, you know, from that standpoint, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think that right now the functionality is quite limited. I was just bringing up a clip there um, that, you know, Facebook is starting to allow a lot more, um, you know, people to take advantage or starting to let outside applications take advantage of the Facebook Live API. Um, it's quite limited right now. Um, and one of the ones that I saw the other day that was quite interesting was the uh, White House, um, you know, had a pretty good use case there where they, oh, here it is, um, where they obviously were able to hook up to, you know, external cameras. Uh, obviously, this doesn't look like it's a, you know, a cell phone video by any means. <laughs> yeah. um, and just with the zooming and panning, and then also you can see here they've got, you know, uh, not a lower third, but a logo embedded right in there. Mm. Um, and it sounds really good. So kind of like with Google Plus or Google Hangouts, you know, that we started diving into and that you did with the SF New Tech and a lot of the live streaming events you do where you need the uh, better audio or the better camera. And so that's a big limitation of, of some of the apps. I mean, Periscope now is integrated with GoPro. Um, so that's external, but I think that's pretty much a single use case hmm. for it. Yeah. Um, and so they're starting to, again, I can't remember the name of the software, but there is already desktop stuff, software out there where you can do something similar to what you're seeing here um, with uh, the White House here and how they were able to put this presentation together. Yeah, it's um, nice. I wonder if that's the mic that he's using here. I wonder if that's the Facebook Live um, uh, app that they're using to stream the audio. But this was live, and uh, it's just one of the first of a kind where they um, were able to use this new Facebook technology. And for mm -hmm. a lot of brands you know, that have a million followers um, or hundreds of thousands or even thousands, you know, streaming live on Facebook is definitely going to have some advantages mm -hmm. over yes, going to Periscope or Lab, Lab because they already have the audience. Um, you know, I've seen where, does it show us? Okay, so 300,000 uh, views. So, you know, I don't really have much to compare that to, but um, that sounds pretty substantial to me. Um, again, uh, it's neat to see, you know, people and, and different places, you know, using the technology in different ways. I just wonder when it gets mainstream. You know, that's the big thing. Like with Blab right now, we can have multiple people where on Facebook you can just stream yourself. Uh, Periscope is, is just yourself. Um, things like that. And I think there's a lot of benefits to being able to have other people, uh, whether that just be commentary or overlay or voiceover. Um, mm. But on the desktop, it, it appears that it's already possible. So it's not free. The software I was looking at is, you know, in the hundreds or thousands of dollars. Uh, to use, but that should trickle down and would be neat to be able to have people on multiple smartphones, like in the room, and we can all, you know, be broadcasting mm. and switching back and forth, um, in a sense, kind of like Blab. Um, and I think that Facebook's already working towards that. And I think that it's um, a pretty exciting technology. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at this, it's multiple cameras they're using. So, you know, that's kind of interesting. So they have a multiple camera setup. <laughs> So a switcher, or some yeah, sort of there, uh, yeah. There's some kind of software switcher. I mean, UStream and uh, Telestream has been doing that for years. Right. Uh, multiple camera views. Um, you know, a, again, I think we talked about this in the, one of the last episodes of Social Time TV. Is that it's the mobile experience that UStream never had, right? Right. You know, and I, I think that's the difference, right? Um, and so well, and that's why, still yeah. Will, will still will allow you to do that, right? You have to start it from your desktop. You can view a, you know, a, um, a cast or, or a live stream from your phone, Yeah. but you can't start it uh, from your phone. That's right. And that obviously means, that's a, you know, a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you're producing something like what I'm seeing here at the White House, um, you, you're most likely going to produce it from a, um, a uh, desktop, 
I mean, you know, some kind of, you know, streamer. Right. You have a whole um, setup. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did the Cherry Blossom Festival. We streamed with two cameras and, um, you know, it was, it was good. I mean, you know, it's nice when it's nicely done. Um, and you can take advantage of that. Um, uh, but I, you know, I was reading the other day, but I, I haven't really kept up on it. There, there are, you know, uh, like you said before, software platforms that are starting to uh, take advantage of Facebook live, right. And develop that. Oh, there's Sean. Huh, interesting. Yeah, this was me testing out Facebook Live on uh, 4G. So not from a Wi-Fi, but just wanted to test it out. I see. And um, it actually worked. It worked quite well, actually. Um, yeah. That's really <laughs> Michael's online. Hey, Michael, how you doing? <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you, you know, it's just the quality. I think. Um, but again, it goes back to the mobile experience we just talked about, right? I mean, you know the separate app is just going to be part of the mobile experience you want to do. You want to go directly to live stream. It's a lot easier to do it on mobile by just hitting the app, right? Cause that's the way yeah. we're just trained to do things. Right. So um, I think, I think separate apps is fine, you know, uh, as yeah. long as you're in the mobile environment, cause that's the way you're using it. Um, I mean, data, data is an issue, you know, with periscopers, I'm not sure how, if they just buy a massive data plan, you know, the people that like to go around the city <laughs> and so forth. This, this was reasonable. I did kind of add it up um, over the 10 minutes or whatever I did. And I did uh -huh. an experiment this in periscope and um, you know, it was, it wasn't uh, uh, what did, what did I, what did I say here uh, for eight minutes, somewhere between a hundred and 300 megabytes. It looks like is what that was. Okay. Yeah. I, so, I mean, I'm seeing uh, data plans advertised now with like 10 gigabytes in them, you know, <laughs> as a, as a plan. Sure. Uh, I have six, but now with video, um, oh, and I mean, even bad. Netflix, forget about it. I learned that the hard way. Streaming Netflix on even your phone just kills the data. Just yeah. Beats that, if you're beats out, right if up. you're out outside, you know, unless you're near a Starbucks or something like that, where <laughs> you get the Wi-Fi for free, um, yeah. might be able to do that. But you know, when you're what, taking a walk, like you're doing, um, most likely there isn't a wireless service there. So, no, um, I, so you're going to have to use your uh, data plan. Well, so yeah. that, you know, so that's definitely a consideration for the mobile streaming. One of the devices I really like, um, I don't have a link to it, but, mm. uh, it's an adapter where you can, uh, actually put a hard line into your cell phone because that's the other thing is that even if you're on your laptop and you know how people, I uh, love to stream from conferences sure. or even just in a hotel room, you know, a lot of bloggers and just anyone these days, you don't even have to be like, you know, a special blogger, but you know, t uh, networks like twit TV uh, with Leo Laporte and his gang. Oh yeah. And you know, Jeff Jarvis, who's a really renowned uh, media publisher or, or, or thought leader or, you know, journalistic type uh, thoughtish person. <laughs> um, he's always coming in remotely, right? Cause he's always traveling and it's not his laptop. It's not the camera, but the hotel Wi-Fi sometimes. Yeah. Because you don't know. Um, and that can be the quality of the Wi-Fi or just how many people are on it. And so I think um, one of the um, considerations in, in this is the mobile technologies and streaming data. So I think that there's a lot of convo around that. I've already started hearing things about 5G. But if you were able to plug a Ethernet cable right into your phone, um, now we're talking about you know um, some interesting use cases where maybe you don't need that big laptop setup, Greg. Maybe you have two or three cell phones, or people yeah, sure. use two or three cell phones sure. from different viewpoints, and you can switch between phones, and uh, the the signal becomes a non-issue. No, um, that's great. I think that's that's a that that's that that's perfect actually. If you think about it, um, there's a lot of, uh, I've been looking into, um, a lot of, a lot of the gigs I do are solo and I need multiple cameras. Well, you know, right. um, having to have the ability to do remote camera work is a must at this point. Right. So, um, having something small, like a, like a, a cell phone would be ideal for a lot of the, um, remote rigs that I've seen, you know, that will that'll just basically, you know, move and pan to a certain place. Right. Um, but you yeah, know, I guess the zooming and panning would be the only thing with cell phones aren't quite as, 
you no, know, yeah, they have to the improve the camera, but, yeah. the, but the resolution wise, oh, resolution, you know, yeah, is you know, Absolutely. is fine. Um, um, audio, you can do a pretty easy, quick little setup. There's some options, they're not necessarily super cheap, but not expensive by any means. Of yeah. adding an external mic to your phone, yeah, um, yeah. isn't like rocket science or anything like that. No, no, there's a lot of good um, Bluetooth ones out there as well. Uh, so you don't need, right? We were talking about that, yeah, and so, um, I think. Samson uh, just sent me one the other day that I need to do a, a review on. And um, uh, this group out of Austria, I uh, on um, Kickstarter, I bought one of their Bluetooth microphones for remote. Oh, yeah. Have you ended up trying that out yet? Not yet. Um, I'm going to. Um, I'm really excited about using that Bluetooth technology with my phone and storing the audio so that I could actually cut it into my video later on. Uh, and just really? kind of see what the uh, quality is. Well, you know, a lot of times when I'm shooting like um, at like Maker Fair, really noisy, um, I have to have a shotgun mic to go right directly into the the subject. Um, and usually it's just really crowded around me. Um, if I could just plunk right next to the guy, uh, my my cell phone with a or or device would that is Bluetooth enabled that will get recorded into my um, either a service or into my phone, then that that's that's kind of ideal right um right. i'm not tethered um i don't have to hold my cell phone next to him while i'm shooting you know um right 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 you know right. A, a lot of these news services are are never having a separate cameraman anymore so I, when i talk to a lot of these uh, media guys um channel four is very famous for this which is kron here in in the bay area they go so so much i mean you know it, it's True, it's about cost, but it's also um, they're they're editing with you know Final Cut Pro or uh, you know <laughs> right. on the fly. I mean, these guys are not only they're shooting it; they're they're video journalists, right? So they're they're shooting it, they're recording it themselves, and also they're editing themselves for the news broadcast. I mean, that think about that, right? Yeah, right yeah. on the fly, yeah. right? Think about that, right? Um, the skills involved as well as. Um, your use of technology, you know, not only do you have to be a good reporter, you have to have also techn some technical skills to, to get that report back to the station. Right. So, um, so, and bloggers have been doing that for years. Um, so it's just kind of following that same path of, uh, of, of bloggers and, and other people. But, but anyway, I, I, I'm kind of excited about some of this new this new steps of streaming them, and 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 I think what uh, we found an article just the other day on, on Google. Well, I mean, a few weeks ago, right? Google, YouTube wants to go YouTube Connect, right? Which is another live streaming service, which yeah um, bypasses. I mean, which you mentioned earlier, right? It bypasses this need to go through Hangouts and then watching it live, and just go directly from the mobile environment directly onto YouTube, right? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I think we all knew that mobile and smartphones was, you know, going to be a huge thing. Uh, but to imagine that this much time was going to be spent on a mobile device, whether that be a phone or um, uh, a tablet. I mean, even when I do email marketing, you know, you get rich analytics. I mean, over half of the people opening the emails are on mobile. And so, you know, constantly as a marketer or just as a designer, we're designing usually for desktop first. And I think that you need to put almost at least as much emphasis on mobile when you're designing something. And so uh, a lot of the time, I think it came back to that is that if we're, if we're you know, doing an important post or an ad for a client, um, you know, viewing it on an actual mobile device is super important because it does look different and it does um, show up differently. And so with these live streaming, Technologies. Remember our, our good friend MQ Todd? Yes, MQ yes. Yeah, yeah. Mr. MQ Todd, we, yes. Yeah, we were chatting the other day, and instead of like a phone and a tablet, a big trend is just having like two phones because that's one of the downsides is that if I, when I was on Facebook Live and when I was on uh, Periscope, if I went to switch apps, like to send out a tweet or to respond to a text message, um, it cut off the broadcast. Hmm. Blab mm. kept it going and just switched to audio, which, you know, kudos for Blab. I was actually able to switch apps and, and do a tweet or respond to a tweet. But, you know, that's the case for having, like, multiple cell phones is that with live streaming video, the multitasking, and I don't know, is Android in it better? Like, can you Netflix, um, 
I mean, I know YouTube is, is a little better. Well, that's only within YouTube. Mind you, on the iPad, it's a little better. But let's talk about smartphones. Um, with the Android, can you do something like Netflix and have that as a... a yeah, around? I mean, you know, what, what, what I do is I use uh, Chromecast, right? So I use my Android with Chromecast and bring it to the TV through, the TV. you know, Netflix. I mean, you could get Netflix, you know, enabled. So, yeah. So if you were mobile, though, out and around, it is pretty hard to watch video or stream video and multitask on one cell phone, isn't it? Yeah, it, it does bring up the argument of multiple cell phones. I mean, I think uh, Robin Wright. Oh, interesting. Um, so it, it's it, it. You know, right now, if you're looking at what our screen looks like, right, a uh, camera angle would be like you said, a separate a mobile phone, right? So you just switch on to that different camera angle at an event. You know, if you have more remote setups. Um, I think I've done that with uh, Google Google Hangouts. I've created separate Hangouts uh, or people calling in, but they mm -hmm. were just different cameras. And so I just switched right. in that app to the different, that would mean my different camera view, right? So that's kind of like, you know, uh, mo mobile hacking um, or video hacking 101, right? You just create different hang Hangout users for the different camera angles and then that's mm -hmm. great. Right. That's how you produce a live event in the older days now, older days of YouTube Live. I can really see that. I can see that in a sense of, but I want to control the broadcast. So here's the difference. So Blab, yes, we can have, we could all be on our cell phones right now and it would look just fine. Right. You probably can't do screen sharing or some of the other uh, features I don't think are available. And that's usually the case with mobile though, right? Is that it doesn't usually have all the, the functionality that, um, that desktop has, but that's kind of what we were touching on as I can see. Um, I have a cell phone, you have a cell phone, um, a couple of the people we're working at have a cell phone, but on my phone, I can switch between the phones for different angles or different audios or different perspectives where mm -hmm. I have control of that and I'll do that mobily. And I think that's going to come to Facebook Live. And now I could be at a party, I can be in a group event, you know, Facebook Live now you can stream right to an event page. So if I have this big event and it's an in-person event and it's really popular, but obviously geographics plays a, a, a thing and I can't make it, um, somebody from the event could be streaming right to that event page. So everyone's going to get a notification and is going to be able to engage in that event virtually. Mm. And so things like that is, you know, is now I'm starting to get excited, not just for business case, but just for like someone's birthday party. You can't go and maybe they don't stream for, you know, hours, but just... 10 or 20, 30 minutes, and you can just say hi and connect with everyone, especially if they could switch phones, you know, like throughout different perspectives. Um, if someone isn't building that, then I just came up with a really good idea. But I'm sure someone's certainly working on that. Well, I, I, I think that was the promise of Ustream for all along, right? Wasn't Ustream created because there were um, soldiers remotely that wanted to connect with their oh, families, right? right? So I uh, think that's been always the promise of, of live streaming, right? Is, is that ability to do that now now the technology you gotta admit it has really changed things because we have that front facing and forward facing cameras now right so we could switch between me talking to the audience and then looking at the event right right, right. with one device and that that yeah. i think brings a lot to live tv now now you know another thing you just got me thinking about in terms of journalism now the promise of all of us being ability to have the ability to be a, a video journalist now comes to fruition, right? Right, right. Right. Those those news agencies that allow, will allow that for you, social media, Sean, or me, Greg, to actually somehow be connected into that, you know, live thing where they don't need video journalists all around, right? I mean, they, we could be the video journalists, right? And they'll just cut into our feed, our Blab feed, or their our YouTube Connect feed, right? And said, "Oh, there's social media. Sean's at the fire right now. Well, you know, let's cut into his live feed and see what he has." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, the journalists that I talk to, one of the issues they have is that they still it's still this old archaic system where a a um, a, a producer calls them for a lead on a story and they have to travel to that location, right? And then by the time they get to that location, either sometimes the story's dead or the story's a non-story, you know, all that changes now with the advent of the ability to live stream with people, right? Now, you know, maybe they could vet 
journalists around the area so that their their response time is almost zero. Um, that would be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? You know, you have vetted AP uh, video live stream journalist. <laughs> well, that'd be kind of cool, huh? <laughs> Well, the other thing they're doing with Snapchat is, um, and I'm starting to, you know, uh, like everyone, I think I was a little reluctant because I didn't quite, you know, just like any new platform, it's so easy. Remember Twitter though, Greg, like it was so, people still say that, you know, what's the value in Twitter and it doesn't make sense. But really anyone that, you know, has a certain level of, you know, just basic intelligence or, you know, basic, you know, use of technology or a phone, if you spend a few hours, right, if you just spend some time and go through it, uh, over time, it just starts to make sense. And you start mm. to see, oh, this is how this person uses it. That's how this person uses it. And it's just like Twitter. For me and Twitter, um, I share a lot of um, blog blogs. My fellow blogging network, I'm sharing you know, uh, awesome new articles ranging from social media to technology to marketing. Mm. And I use it as a way for me to share information and to find information. And yeah, I do some personal tweets here and there. And definitely for live events, it's amazing. But it's not something where I'm live I'm live blogging or live tweeting my life mm -hmm. all day long. Mm -hmm. Other people it is, right? They are using constant updates and sharing those Instagram pics and uh, connecting with people. And Snapchat's the same way is that um, a lot of people, it is it is life blogging, but that's building transparency, right? So if they are a business professional, it really doesn't necessarily matter if they're talking about business, you get to know them. And if you get to know them, then maybe you start to get to like them. And if you start to get to like them, maybe you start to get to trust them. So that when you're uh, mm -hmm. looking for that marketing expert or that online consultant for who knows what, maybe it's your website, your accounting, your taxes, your uh, legal, who are you going to go to, right? And so that's where social media is the long game. It's not about pushing out, this is what I sell, this is what I do. Although, you know, it's important to ideally have that information available for people who want it. It's about get to know me, get to know what I'm about. This is my personality. Um, because not everyone's a good fit for other people. And that's like, remember in social media, even Greg, like I'll share a lot of people that traditionally people would think are my competition, like other people in marketing or that do things that are very similar to what I do in social media, but they're their own flavor. They're their own taste. And so they're going to attract a client that's drawn to that. And I'm going to attract clients that are more drawn to my energy or what I focus on a little bit more. And so that's why this competition thing I find with social media, um, has really helped us see the bigger picture in the sense that it's just finding the right couple, the right, you know, the right match um, versus competing against each other. I think by promoting, you know, if someone's a better fit in my network that I know is a good, you know, a good uh, professional, absolutely. Because, you know, I know that there's um, reciprocity in that as well. And so it doesn't always have to be me, me, me. Hmm. That being said, a lot of people are using Snapchat, you know, a tip a day about whatever they do. And that can be, art you know that can be demonstrating their artwork that can be uh, social media tips or it can be travel there's a travel blogger and his snapchat's amazing and he just takes little clips of him you know doing drone videos and little stories and so on and so forth and i don't know how they're doing it but at live events the event snapchat switches people it takes people snaps from it maybe because they geotag it but they pull them in. So it does do what we were talking about, where it is pulling from everyone's different cameras. It's not the same person just going around snapping. Um, so this stuff is already happening. And I think it's fun, especially if you're at home and you're not at the event, you can really get involved. And I think that's a good thing. Oh, you know, it'd be really cool if you're at an event. Um, if you had the ability to produce multiple streams into the mainstream, right? So like, let's, let's say you're, you're monitoring a concert you know, and now concerts are very tricky, right? Because there's copyrighted things and all this stuff. But let's just right. let's just let's just play well, that that's out. That's a whole other conversation, isn't it? But yeah, yeah right. well, let's play that out, right? That that you know, uh, I want to take some of the streams that people are doing and actually use it in my production. Wouldn't that be cool, right? Right. And um, you know, you know, if someone's right at the stage versus someone you know from a far away shot. Again, it goes back to that thing we were talking about earlier. Um, having the the audience be the journalist and not not the not the journalist anymore that's kind of weird right. huh but it is kind of weird you know but I mean because we're we're conditioned that way right we're we're used to having things that way but you know if you still have the 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 ability to curate and produce then you still have control over it you know 
just like like a producer would in a control room sure. at a yeah. broadcast, right? I think that would be so cool, though, Greg. And I yeah. don't think that it's that far away no. to be able to do something like that. Um, and uh, you know, and so hopefully, you know, but getting cut, you know, and then the other part of the conversation is just getting com comfortable in front of the camera because you know, if you haven't done a lot of it, it, is a little bit of a new experience. And again, for anyone that's hesitating, and even myself sometimes, it's just a matter of doing it. Just practice, and it gets easier. Right. right? The more right. you do it, you get used to looking into the camera. And um, for me, it was the strangest thing. It still is sometimes, <laughs> right? Like, because I want to look at the screen, but then you have to look in the camera, right? Sure. What yeah. I'm looking forward to, and I know they're working a little bit on this technology, is where the screen itself has built-in cameras. So no matter where I look on the screen, it tracks my eyes and makes it look like I'm looking directly into the camera. Mm. That is something that I would definitely be a fan of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I... You know, going back to that thing we we're talking about robots, um, when we shot our show for the Cherry Blossom Festival, that, you know, NBC 11 was totally automated. You know, they only had control room people. So basically all the cameras oh, were, really? were automated. Yeah, there were no cameramen. So basically, you know, someone had a joystick and can move the camera around. Um, oh, so on they just had their cameras? Yeah, yeah. They, they were all automated, all automated. Um so that was kind of interesting to see, uh, you know, at NBC 11, they were, I, I think that's pretty common now um, from what I understand. So um, to see that happen is, is interesting. Um, so anyway, I think cool. we, uh, live streaming. Yeah. We got to have another show on that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Talk about that some more. What else is on your mind, my friend? I think that was about it. Yeah. Um, you know, these are just, you know, uh, topics that definitely interest me um, in the sense of application, not just business, but personal. And I think that um, we got through our main uh, our main topics for today's show. Absolutely. Well, thanks for uh, uh, getting me on the horse again. It's been a long time since we actually uh, chatted about one of the, the current topics. Live streaming is a definitely a great topic to talk about, so. We have had a bit of a, uh, a hiatus, but we're back, you know, and I think that it's important for us to stay open to trying all the different platforms. You know, Blab is great and there's a neat community here, but that can be said about all the different um, yeah, let's, platforms. Let's, right? let's, let's try Facebook Live next time, actually. I want to yeah, see how that works. Thing is how well, it's only a single one. Yeah. Um, well, there, probably, is, there well, is that software. You might, you're might you a big way. You you can you probably know somebody <laughs> that, that has access to uh, yeah. to it. But that would be really cool, especially if you could pre-promote it. You know, that's the thing on Facebook is if you don't spend any money, it's hard for people to see your posts. I mean, sure, your friends and your beautiful pictures, that's easy. But if it's like a video or a post that's something important or semi-business or marketing-wise, forget about it, right? Unless you do a promoted post and spend a few bucks. Well, but how about promoted live video? Well, it, it's where limited. I mean, on the personal channel, it's limited by the person's uh, privacy settings, right? Yeah, privacy too. I mean, even on a personal setting, sometimes you can do a, a post and just none of your friends are going to see it. Right. Kind of time of day. But also, um, again, this number keeps coming up, but on average, just pretend that every time you post, you're competing with 1,500 other posts that could possibly show up in that person's news feed. So Facebook has algorithms, and depending on how often your friends interact with you and how often you interact with them, but sometimes it just disappears. And so then you're like, oh, why did I even bother posting this? Um, mm -hmm which is great because then you can just think of it as a journal and be like, oh, well, it's nice just to post to have it there so if people want to go back. But um, for a limited time, you were able to promote personal posts on Facebook, not just through business pages. But mm -hmm. that's also an argument or a use case of why you should have a business or brand page because then you can pay to promote those posts. Like, you know, we have, I don't know, a few hundred on the Social Time TV page um, but just imagine that you could, you know, a lot of those people we've known for years, Greg, and who have kind of come and gone and, um, imagine we could reach them all though. And all those people that, you know, uh, cause none of them were really spammy, right? Those are kind of people that somehow me or you have engaged with somehow, right? And those are the people you want to reach on Twitter. Again, we would, there's so many amazing people that I've connected with that we still follow each other. But when you're following thousands of people, the chance that they saw my tweet about our show, you know, is pretty slim, maybe hmm. after the fact. Right. And so. I think that's still going to be um, something for a topic for another show is how to cut through that noise and how to compete with those 1500 other posts and what you can do to stay relevant. 
Well, I, you know, why I just came up with an idea that was kind of a crazy idea is that, you know, we could create two separate live events, one on your feed, one on my feed. Oh, and, interesting. And I'll be listening to your feed and you'll be listening to mine. That's how we interact. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I thought, oh, I thought what about would, the to see how the delay works and all that kind of stuff. Well, no, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll have the same conversation, but it'll be on two separate channels. It'll be kind of interesting. It'll be, you know, according to me on one channel because I'm listening to you and the other right. ones are there. And I, I probably actually, what I could do is actually through my mixer, put in your feed um, onto oh, really? this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll just take the um, earphone <laughs> jack, put it in my mixer and mix it directly back in again. So basically, we could hear our conversation. So as I'm talking onto it, it's a live conversation, but it was with you on the other side. So, right, I think I could do that. That could be cool. Oh, but then we and so we would talk from different platforms, though. Like, we yeah, would, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I'm just like we have a crazy no, no. idea of how to get, how to do a show on Facebook Live if, since it's only from one point of view, right? Right. Um, It'd be fun to also even just have more than one platform, like to do Blab, YouTube Connect, Periscope. <laughs> Just with using our phones, do our cameras. Yeah, we'll have phones all over right? us. Like, and, and, phones and, and tablets all over us. That's pretty funny. You know, it might need up a lot of bandwidth. But, uh, um, you know, I think we're, you know, here's the thing, Greg. Bottom line, we're on the cusp of all this. This is just, it's all scattered. It's all using different, slightly different technologies. And some of them are working better than others. But internet's getting faster. Data is kind of getting cheaper i don't know maybe not well you know I, I, it's getting more accessible that's where the companies are going to make money i think yeah, so they forget can. cell phone minutes they, forget they, unlimited they, calling that's fantastic they, 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 they can't need unlimited calling well, that, that that's that's their goal right you can't give away that you yeah. know unless you pay for storage which is kind of the other case right is that they don't get you for the data but you get you have to store the videos or store the stuff right right sure, sure. so you know, data storage or data streaming is still going to be, I think, the key to where AT and T and all those other guys are going to be making some money, right? So, what's so. going on in the next week for you, Greg? Ah, uh, let's see. Um, you know, I think uh, I'll be working in the San Francisco office for our marketing research company this week. I was all over the place last week. I was in Fremont, San Francisco, and Sunnyvale. I was in Sunnyvale yesterday, so I'm pretty. Pretty interesting things going on um, in the tech area. You know, I, I can't obviously I can't talk about because it it's market research. But sure. but uh, you know, like Greg's a big deal for those that you no, know. No, 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 not a big deal. But um, but <laughs> I think uh, yeah, uh, there's going to be some pretty cool things that these big companies are be coming up with. That's like uh, it's going to just knock your socks off. I think. Cool. Yeah, there's going to be some cool stuff. Um, so stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned awesome. for more. <laughs> uh, what are you doing this week? Well, uh, this week is Canada's largest social media conference, Social Media Camp, and I will be attending. Nice. Uh, with some of my favorite people. Uh, there's definitely there's some speakers coming from out of town. I'm really excited about seeing, and uh, a lot of my social media friends that you don't necessarily always get to see. So I'm totally excited. And depending, I'm definitely going to try to do some live streaming, Greg. So if Depending on your schedule, if I can catch you, it'd be neat to do some, uh, maybe some quick little interviews or some blabs right from uh, social media camp. Oh, and be so cool. I'll ping you and see if we can't do it that way. Um, but blab would be a neat format and it would just be neat for them to be able to uh, see how we, what we do and to connect with us. Um, but yeah, definitely do some snaps. For those who don't follow me on Snapchat, social media, Sean, that's where I should put in my snap code. <laughs> Um, and uh, but you can search me and uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. So that starts Thursday. So hopefully get a ton of work done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then hopefully uh, be able to enjoy the camp and all the awesome people that will be. There. Starts Thursday, uh, Thursday and Friday, or Thursday through yeah, the so weekend. Thursday's kind of like the warm up day. You know, there's some things going on, some coaching sessions. Shout out to Julie Selby, social media, who's one of the camp coaches and is going to be speaking. Julie, I hope your presentation's looking sharp and finished. I'm sure it is. Um, and uh, so Thursday's that, and then so Friday's a main day. Saturday, Saturday's a main. Day. So, so this is the uh, this is a big one for Victoria or the area, including Vancouver, up in the. the this West is a, this this turn. Yeah, this is actually the biggest social media conference in all of Canada. So, including Vancouver, Toronto, um, all those okay. cities that you may or may not have ever heard of, being down south from us Canadians, but uh, it's like our version of social media marketing world. 
And uh, there's some really, you know, Victoria is a, is, a, is, a, is just a shining tech hub. Again, we're still kind of a secret. Just Vancouver used to be a secret. Now so many films and things happen, but we're on Vancouver Island, which is an hour and a half ferry ride from Vancouver, but it's a huge island and we have a booming tech sector. And we got into social media re really early and this camp's really well organized and it just turned out to be, uh, grows every year. And so um, apparently the West Coast is the best coast. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, uh, so, so what do they expect to, what, what do you expect to get out of this? Is, is it uh, people who from newbies to experienced people expect to get something out of it? Or what, 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 do, you, what, what do you do at this thing? That's an excellent question. Um, so all over the map. Yeah. For new people to social media, probably there would be one of the best reasons to go because there would be so much value and be exposed to so many ideas and um, really valuable perspectives before you've you know, spent a ton and ton of time at it. Uh, that being said, it doesn't just focus on marketing. You know, there's uh, t talks or uh, lectures about different parts of social media, whether that be privacy or just um, just different, just I uh, can't think off the top of my head, but just different ways, just different neat learnings and different conversations that don't just all around revolve around business. So it's not just a business conference. That being said, for myself, it's uh, the networking for sure. Um, I, the, some of the sessions are going to be great, but for me, uh, I get to interact with a lot of those people already and I see their work online. So it's nice to get as much of that in as possible, but it's just really getting a chance to network with people from all different places and all different industries and do a little business. Let's see. Um, I'm just looking at the site here. It's uh, sponsored by Alacrity Foundation. Um, I don't know. Use.ca. Um, Helijet. <laughs> Helijet. That's our helicopter service to the island. Hello fast. Um, Hello fast. Helijet. Hello fast. Interactive Tourism yeah. Victoria, of course. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And um, McAllister, consumer focused marketing. Ah, okay, market research firm. Uh, cool. Wow, that it looks it looks pretty good. Let me see what they have in terms of their um, let's see education, ideas, networking, as you said, and success is on their website. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, catch me up. Yeah, like, yeah. On Thursday or Friday, I should be around for a few minutes, so oh, cool. I should be able to do something. Yeah. Sounds uh, good. Cool. Well, thanks again, Greg. Yep. Uh, and uh, at the very least, let's find a time in the next week. We'll we'll do something. Sure. And uh, everyone that's seeing this, we're actually getting quite a bit of replays. The last couple of videos, you know, uh, nothing earth shattering, but 20 or 30 views, you know, in the last few weeks. So that's kind of neat that people are able to find the content and engage with it on Blab here. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. And so that, that's nice us to, to uh, for all of your eyeballs. Yeah. It's nice to see Michael Stelzner online. So that was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, all right. Let's uh, speaking uh, of social media marketing. World. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's Michael. Yeah, who put that on? That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. It was awesome. It was cool. I, I was gonna great lead in, huh? You you, <laughs> you got that you got the bait really good on that one. Thank you that's so much. You um, but anyway, um yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. I appreciate that. And thanks for at least listening to us and Sean and I talking about um live streaming today, which is a very relevant topic, and that's why we're doing this. So anyway. All right, Sean. Thanks a lot, man. Have a great thanks, rest man. of the weekend and uh, yeah, be safe. Thanks. Bye for now.